running for audio. Welcome to a Tin Dog Podcast, this time covering main range release from Big Finish, number 209, Aquitaine. But before I do so, I just need to attract everyone's attention to the fact that there's a Kickstarter campaign out there talking about, well, the Doctor Who pinball. Now, I've played the Doctor Who pinball in my youth down at Whitley Bay at the Spanish City. You've got to be very careful how you say that these days. But yeah. I had a great time, and it's lovely to see this sort of thing being kicked off. So if you do a quick search on any Google, you'll be able to find that this Kickstarter is out there, and you'll be able to find all the details you'll need. The artwork's superb, and you know what? A bit of my childhood, just sitting there. Oh, I can imagine. Ten pence pieces being slotted in, flicky buttons. Oh, yeah, very nice. Anyway, enough about that. Some more Peter Davis nonsense with main range release number 209. Now, for those of you paying attention, you've all known that I've got this childhood crush on Janet Fielding that, you know, it's obviously I've grown and matured over the years, but I've still got that soft spot for Tegan. And when she's done properly, like she was in Waters of Amsterdam, she's great. So here we've got the TARDIS crew of the Fifth Doctor, Nyssa and Tegan. And it's great. I mean, it's a truly lovely story. I only saw the cover, but I try not to go into too many spoilers or too many reviews beforehand because I want to experience the story. But on the cover, there's something that I now obviously know is a robot, but I thought it was one of those ancient masks that you would wear for smelling out the plague. And of course, it's called Aquitaine. And around the time that I listened to this, Radio 4's In Our Time series was doing Helena of Aquitaine, so I assumed that it was a historical. I couldn't have been more wrong. Now, yes, this story, you've got to admit, has flashes of other Doctor Whos, but that more makes it feel of its time than, say, a rip-off or something like that, or heavily influenced, shall we say. Yes, there are moments that remind you of, say, Four to Doomsday, on the grounds that they're on a gigantic spaceship. And there's a very small crew that they have to interact with. But for me, the thing that it felt closest to was the Red Dwarf. Because the main character, Hargreaves, the butler robot who runs everything, couldn't be more Crichton-like than, well, without breaching somebody's copyright. He's great. He's, He's proper Crichton. He's not... Comedy Crichton, he's an actual Jeeves and Wooster style butler robot. So yeah, this isn't the historical that I thought I was signing up for, and that made me smile straight from the beginning. As always with Big Finish, you've got superb performances all round. And yes, it does have a tiny bit of a feel of the early adventures Black Hole, which was out not two months ago where you've got the gravitational effects of a black hole affecting a giant spaceship. But that's that's kind of where the similarities end. And yeah, large gravity phenomenon are going to have certain effects, and they do make for a nice bit of television slash audio. I've been thinking lately, is Doctor Who now more of an audio medium for me than is TV? TV Doctor Who always puts me on edge, but audio Doctor Who, and let's face it, there's almost three times as much audio Doctor Who than there ever is on TV. And all of the Doctors, with the exception of the latest one, number nine, are all served better and have more stories on audio. I've rambled. I'll get back to the actual story in the actual review. Suffice to say that this particular story is very good. It's much better than you would think. Imagine the sort of spaceship you would see in silent running in orbit around a black hole. Lots of plants, a botanical section. Yes, tell you what, let me read you the synopsis. 
Today should be much like every other day for Hargreaves, the computer consciousness that controls daily life on board the spaceship Aquitaine, stationed on the outer fringes of a black hole. Water the plants, run the diagnostics, cook the captain's breakfast, then tidy the plates away, rotate the ship, clean the windows of the observation deck, and then at last the day's work is done. Hargreaves will dim the lights in the sleeping quarters, but no one will sleep aboard the Aquitaine tonight, because the Aquitaine's crew is missing. But today will be different. Today, a space-time spaceship called the TARDIS will materialise in the botanical section. Bringing the Doctor, Nyssa and Tegan aboard the Aquitaine together, they will seek to discover the truth of what happened to Hargreaves' crew. If only the ghosts would let them. It's been written by Simon Barnard and Paul Morris. Now, I don't know if I'm a huge fan of the shared writing partnership style scripts. I'm not 100% certain on how that works. Does one person do something, give the script to the other, they tinker with it, they give it back, or do they work separately, or do they sit in the same office, or does one person type? This is something that I'd need to look into. But this feels like a uniform, one voice, one author piece. It's tremendously well thought out. And yes, the level of threat and the location of threat, and I don't want to give anything else away, is interesting. Because like I said, I don't want to give anything away. But it's a thoroughly enjoyable story. And if you like this particular TARDIS team, perfectly acceptable. I would recommend this. Supporting cast, absolutely spot on. But it is Hargreaves, absolutely Hargreaves, who steals the show. Yes, there are flashes of him being a bit like Handles at one point. But you know what? That's not a bad thing, is it? More, so much more than the sum of its parts. This story rocks. And so I'll play the trailer and let you decide for yourself. And I'll be back very soon where we can discuss, hmm, more Doctor Who? Yeah. Be seeing you. Coming soon from Big Finish Productions. Whilst cleaning silverware, one must not be overzealous. Each time a knife, fork or spoon is polished, a little of the surface is removed. Doctor Who... Aquitaine. Doctor? Doctor, are you there? Doctor! It's nothing to do with the TARDIS, it's a distress signal. Well, aren't you going to answer it? That's what I've been trying to do. Just need to lock on to the signal! No one sleeps on the HMS Aquitaine tonight. The lights of a thousand galaxies twinkle in the infinite darkness outside. It's worse this time, more violent. Tegan, hold on to something. I take back everything I ever said about your driving. There is no such life sign now. Your friend is gone. If there's no one else here, then what was that? Merely one of the voices, yes. Voices? You didn't say anything about voices. Are you saying this ship is haunted? It's happening again, is it? Who are you? What do you want? Please! It is a sad state of affairs to be a gentleman's personal gentleman when one's gentleman, or lady, is missing. Big Finish. We love stories. That was the Doctor Who Tin Dog Podcast, available on iTunes, YouTube, Twitter, RSS, Vimeo, and across the internet. Doctor Who and its associated properties are all copyright and trademark of the BBC. No infringement is intended. Why not become a supporter by visiting patreon.com slash tin dog? Contact the show on tin-dog at hotmail.co.uk. The Tin Dog Podcast is a founder member of the Doctor Who Podcast Alliance. <laughs>